Welcome in to the post-game edition. Rolling with Rohan here on a Saturday night after LSU impressively takes down Western Michigan and by far the most impressive performance from LSU start to finish on the season defensively. Flying around out there offensively. Five touchdowns by Max Johnson by halftime tonight. Woo! Freshman wide receivers all over the place. Jack Besh in the game plan all night. It is uh, good to be here with you, everybody. Cheers. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. 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 Uh, Rohan is... Uh, Whiskey boys. Rohan has fed the group uh, well. Oh, look who it is. Oh, thank okay. you. Yeah, okay, Mel. And my baby. Uh, Ro, where would you start? Besides, the chicken was fantastic. <laughs> the steak was great. Sorry, man. The fillet bites. <laughs> Those were the bones. And Mark can't compete. No. So good. The, the fillet bites was a deal, though. Woo. Hey, right, next time we're going to wrap the thing with some provolone cheese and yep. some bacon. A little jalapeno. A little jalapeno. But let's see it. Hey, start with where I addressed last week. And we're going to start with the coaches. I yeah. mean, we know that the guys played, and and, and, and I bash the – well, I, I don't bash. I just hold them accountable um, because I feel like, as a coach, that's your job. And I think they did a fantastic job tonight. I think they did a fantastic job. I'm going to definitely get on them when they're wrong, but I'm going to take my hats off to them when I see different. And I saw different in the game plan with Coach Pease. I saw a different early in the game plan. Absolutely, man, man. They were taking shots Absolutely. early. First, first play. play of the game. First play. That's what I'm Let's telling you. Let's got Kayshawn killed. Now, and that was, listen, they listening to the show, baby. We know yes. that. They listening to the show. I felt that way. Hey, because listen, <laughs> what we talked about last week as far as like, need to take shots early, even if you drop back and just throw a go route. Uh-huh. What did they do? First play of the game. Drop back and throw a go route. Deion Smith, welcome to the party, kid. You know what Goodness I mean? Gracious. Hey, Could and, Trey Palmer and, have missed the worst game? I we mean. Were, we weren't even talking about this kid. Malik Neighbors played tonight. I love his numbers, tonight. though. I love his number. Malik Neighbors, I mean, he oh, was like. Oh, you do. <laughs> yeah, that thing should be in the rafters. He looks so neighbors great. Neighbors look good. The, the, the catch on the side. Like, yeah, neighbors look good. He just attacked that thing. Yeah, he looked good. Well, he Deion, just said, I, I got to get on the stat sheet. I think Deion yeah. Smith was the highest rated out of high school out of all the yeah, right. Wow. Number one player out of the state of Mississippi. That's true. Um, yeah. He was awesome tonight, man. And 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 let me say this. I really um I'm glad to see that Coach Pease changed some things up tonight. I'm glad to see what the game plan was. He went into multiple formations. He uh did a lot of formate excuse me, uh, a lot of motions, a lot of uh RPOs. Yeah. And they got the run game going early. Those RPOs look good. They look good, man. And 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 but see, this is the thing. I, I really believe that that's 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 a very strong point in Max's game. Yeah. Part of it because he gets the ball out quick, he understands defense, he understands where he's reading in the game and who he's reading in the RPO from going from the defensive end to the play side linebacker to that side. So now if that linebacker steps up, boom, I'm pulling, I'm hitting that slant behind him as we saw in the football game. Now that guy sits back, I'm letting it go and letting it ride. So it was a very – remember last week, JC, we talked about um, what we what we expected we were going to see this week. And we talked about – Seeing certain guys get balls, seeing certain guys carry balls, seeing a, a contrite, contrite game plan as far as, like, what we want to do. Run RPO is what you saw tonight. Yeah. You saw run RPO tonight, and you saw shots. Let's push it. And you know what? Whether it was let's do it because we got ACC play coming up and we got to have – we got to get it on film so people understand and prepare for it. But because you can see that. They were off a little bit, even with those shots. Uh -huh. Even the ones that were completed, and, and I'm not like they were a little late. A little bit underthrown. Underthrown. Yeah. Some a little bit with too much air, and and that's and I have to say that's just from not throwing them. Yeah, you know. So, kudos to uh, Peas and 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 what I also saw tonight, man. I was happy to see. I I, I saw Max going to the right side on the side of this. I saw him going to the right side. 
um, picking out and identifying a Mike linebacker and where your blitz was coming from and where it wasn't coming from. So I was very excited to see they played with a lot of accuracy tonight. And I was very, very, very pleased to see the, the, the improvement from last week. Uh, how about Corey Kiner's night? Uh, 12 carries, 74 yards, an impressive touchdown. He really showed everything on that last drive, the power, the speed. Quickness. The quickness, yeah, the agility, stiff that stiff arm, oh. that, that spin move to score. Yep. Was and you really know, impressive. I, I, Shades the speed, Leonard on that spin move. The speed. I mean, he kind of showed off tonight. I thought – he made a case to be the number one back on this team going into the, to Mississippi State. Well, I think he definitely threw his name in the hat um, as that to be get more carries. But, it, you know, it, it's what we go back to when, we, when I was asked about the running back and the running back position. Given the opportunity to make plays in the run, you see you have a plethora of backs. <laughs> you have backs that are from all different, different skill sets. And what you saw tonight was those backs in their comfort zone, whether it was the raggedy toss, left toss right, yeah. whether it was the we saw some screens tonight, we saw some 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 deep handoffs, we saw some stretch handoffs tonight. So and you and I think you saw those things because you had different backs in the game, and these coaches are, I think are getting an, a, a little bit more understanding of what these guys are good at in the situations to put them in to be successful. Um, you mentioned the play calling and how they were much more aggressive tonight. Uh, you, you also mentioned last week, which I thought something was interesting that I thought played out tonight, as a play caller, you're constantly setting things up. Yeah. Where LSU through the first two weeks kind of looked like they were just kind of grabbing in the air on what was going to work at that time. It looked like tonight was kind of more of a, a well thought out play that the, the, the game plan made sense for four quarters. Yeah, and I think that's what you, you, you see that now because now you have two games under your belt and you have an understanding of what these guys do well offensively um, on the offensive line, what the quarterback does well, and what he's comfortable in calling for him right now. And, 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 and I think that as, as, as we continue to establish the running game and as we continue to get the running game going a little bit better against stiffer and better opponents, and I don't mean everything's over 100 yards or we busting this, busting that, but where's a consistent uh, three yards a pop, three yards a pop, and now no, everyone isn't loading up or everyone isn't blitzing because we have a young quarterback and now you want to put the pressure on him and make us one-dimensional. So the best as – in, you know, whether it's the flare, whether it's the tear screens, whether it's the screens, whether it's the long handoffs like we saw tonight that I don't like, but I understand why we're doing it. Um, whether it's those things to establish the running game, to make it so we're not just dropping back and throwing a football or RPO. And, and the RPO game came into play whenever we can pin those ta- excuse me, pin those ends or kick those ends out. Pin so, and pull. Yeah, man. So it, it, it's, I like what I saw tonight out of the offense. What, uh, the only thing I would ask is where has it been? If you, you know, if you have these kind of things, this isn't something you can install in a week and expect to run well, no, it Well, no, I think success. it's been there. I think it's just – like I stated last week, you're dealing with a rookie play caller that's in a new system himself, new players, and he's trying to figure out what goes well as well with the players that he have. And you can't figure some of that, those things out until you see some guys play. And I think now going into this past game, he sees, okay, all right, let me implement some screens. Let me do this. Let me do that. So, you know, I'm not going to knock him for not getting to it earlier. I'm going to just give him some credit and grace right now for, for sure. getting into it now and, and showing that he is, you know, whether it's seeing what these guys can do, seeing what Max can do. Because he got the ball out of Max's hands quick tonight. He did. The ball came out of Max's hands quick as hell tonight. It's though. like he, he had a menu with too many options, and he was like he didn't know which, yeah. one, which food was good. And, and he was like, I'm just going to pick one of everything. And that's the type of player he is, Max, when it comes to – you can't give him too much. You got to give him one or two choices and get going because he wants to be perfect. I, and, and you can't play ball like that. I'm glad that they've – settled in on the freshman wide receivers as the options because all these cats can Monsters. go, bro. I mean, oh, like, have mercy. I mean, Jack Besh seems like a veteran at this point. Brian Thomas seems like he's even got to be more in the game plan. Uh, I mean, obviously, Deion Jones tonight. I mean, Deion Smith yeah. was incredible. Whew. That We um, weren't even talking about him. I, you really weren't. And, and then Malik Neighbors saw his first action 
in in, in all, purple and gold. I mean, they all. Can, I mean, Jare Jenkins caught a pass at the end of the game or was a target at the end of the like game. It was the first time he touched. And the Noah and I looked. Around, I was like, I forgot he was even in the rotation. <laughs> As it should be. I mean, when it, it looks, it, I mean, I'm not knocking on him, but, but when you look guys, at these guys next to him, I mean, they, they all look electric. like first rounders. Yeah, that, they all look like. I mean, and you understand that makes you kind of understand what they're trying to do on the offensive side of the ball. It's like we have so many guys, we want to get them in space, we want to be able to play with five wide receivers because. LSU has five wide receivers that can play. Yeah, they do. But at the same time, you have to they add. Have you have to. You, well, you have to establish an identity. You have to establish what we're going to be. This is the thing. Others, uh, you know, you're, the reason why you recruit these guys is to have the plethora of talent that you have there so you could do whatever it is that you want to do. But that does not mean that, okay, now we go among, throw out everything and now, you know, do this right here. They, you use those guys according to how they could benefit you and how they could benefit themselves. Now, whether it's four wires, five wires, now two of those guys may need to learn two positions in order to get them on the field and get them in the rotation a little bit more. So, you know, it's good to have the 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 the, the talent. It's good to have all that. But it's, it's up to these coaches, man, to put them in the position to get the job done. Yeah. Period. Um, really impressive group. I mean, just – and they're Talks different about, players. They are. I mean, you know they what I mean? All, like they different. all bring something they different. different. Yeah, but I'm going to tell you, Malik Neighbors, at the, out, out that group, he's the, in my opinion, he's the alpha dog. Yeah. And I mean, I know, like, he probably has the least amount of catches at this point and all that and all that, and I know he's been injured, but the boy is a dog. Another name that we got to start talking about in the wide receiver group is Devonta Lee, huh? I mean, man, he had a pretty yeah. nice night tonight. Man was trying to five quit catches, last week. Five catches, 47 yards, and a score Felt tonight to for Devonta Lee. Felt good to see him get that touchdown. It, it did. did, baby. It did. They were feeding He has him. great hands, man. D, he's a hell of an athlete. He has good. great hands. He uh, has great, great Deion hands. Smith, Jack Besh, and Devonta Lee all had five catches tonight. That's awesome. Uh, Kayshawn Butte had six. They really, had, they really put emphasis on getting him the ball. Yeah, you know what, though? I'm glad to see – other guys getting targets though because yeah. um for for the first two games you do know you knew where uh max's comfort zone was and yeah. that was with booty and so it's good for him to be able to spread that wealth around because dude when you get into these sec plays and it's gonna be tough you got what i'm saying it's gonna be tough but when you get into these plays and you're playing these teams that's gonna take away your best option on offense, you have to now have that trust in those other four guys or other three guys, whoever's out there, that they can make the plays as well. So it's good to see those youngsters stepping up. Uh, final in Happy Valley, 28-20. Penn State defeats Auburn at the uh, what looks like a, a fantastic atmosphere as James Franklin is uh, – Getting interviewed now. Some some really good that games today. That whiteout is crazy. It is. State, it's crazy, bro. man. It does. It looks nuts on TV. They finally have a winning record with the whiteout. Uh, they were yeah, they finally get six. one. 28-20 winners tonight. Really good day for college football, I thought. It was fantastic. I, that game in the swamp between Alabama mm. and Florida, I really, mm. I, I mean, I, I bit the bait on that one, man. I thought for sure Alabama. And that it started out where they were dominating. Apparently, that's the bet. You go Alabama first half and let it ride after that. You just don't care after that. Just take Alabama first half because they roll, man. Might be the play. But then, really, I mean, give Dan Mullen in Florida a lot of credit because in-game adjustments. And they really look like they are a big-time competitor in college football. I mean, I think a lot of people anticipated that roster to be down. You didn't see Anthony Richardson at all today. The true freshman quarterback, what is Hammy? Emory Jones, really? I mean, Emory Jones played his behind off. He though. did, man. Emory he, Jones played his behind did. off, and and I and the, this is the thing. Like, I don't even think that there's a question right now at Florida with that situation. Yeah, no, 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 it can't be no, after today. Hell no, like Emory Jones. Emory Jones stepped up and made some plays today that he looked like he was a damn senior. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, damn near 100 yards rushing. Over 200 yards passing, very poised, very, very poised under pressure. Saban threw everything at that kid today with the kitchen sink, bro. He did. I'm serious, man. He and, did. And I and I know the type of hazard and dis, distress that he was trying to force on that kid. And that kid stood in there sometimes and made some throws that 
you know, and took the hit right in the draw. So it, he was a he was he he showed today um, that he solidified himself as a starting quarterback for the Florida Gators. He was man. I thought that for look, I, it, you know what was more impressive for Florida is I thought they were the more physical team. And that's oh, hard to do. I mean, that is Alabama. that's tough to do because against. If you, yeah. I think Coach Saban said that. Yeah, if you, you, but I mean, if you watch the first half they of got, that, like they the first got quarter, shoved Alabama around. Was, but Alabama was smacking was them in the banging, mouth. Yeah. And then banging. they found like the ebbs and flows started to go back. Like, oh, shit, this is going to be competitive. Yeah. And I owe Katie uh, an apology. We do. I he mean. Might need an advance on the old page. We, we, we laughed. At, her yeah, we kind of laughed her out of the room when she said Florida was going to win that game. And they were a two-point conversion away from being an OT in the swamp. What looked like a great well, atmosphere they day. covered. Hell yeah, they That's cover. what I'm saying. Katie's about to start making some bets. <laughs> yeah, I, need, I might need an advance on this paycheck after what's happening to me. I thought I knew what I was doing. <laughs> great game today in the swamp. Yeah, nobody's been. College um, football's yes. the best. It was. It was It was great. And LSU obviously played their best uh, defensively. How good were they? I, I thought Stingley set the tone early on with that hit when he came up and ca- calls the phone. Hopefully everything's good with Andre Anthony. Because yeah. yeah. that would be a hit for this defense. He's obviously... Much more than than the than the leading uh, well, sack maker yeah, on this team. Just, I mean, he's kind of a leader. Yeah, everybody man. looks and at he's him in that NASCAR yeah. package where they get they've had plethora of sacks over the last few games. I mean, albeit McNeese, but at the same time, a plethora of sacks. Him, it'd be interesting to see what the, what what the prognosis is on him when he comes back on Monday or Tuesday. But I hope he's okay. The defense, man. The defense. Um, listen, they've been improving every week. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Last week was a huge step. I think they even took a bigger step this week. Yeah. I think that they, like, like you know. They were you could, tested. You, you could tell they shored up some things. Um, um, they still, you could still see, especially when the game is out of reach or so to speak. They think the game is out of reach. You could still see a little bit of a lack of focus, lack of looking at the clock. Um, you know, not really as focused as you were in the first, in the first quarter. Um, so you want to shore that up. You want to shore that up because you're gonna. It's it, it's 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 time to rock and roll now, baby. What do you think about him being at, or the defense having such an, like an emphasis on having four down linemen all the time? Because I feel like that's a way. After you watch Dave Aranda's defense and what LSU did, it allows you to be so multiple and where you can bring pressure from. But Coach O's obviously put an emphasis on having four down linemen. I understand they're talented, but it kind of gives you like a little bit of a tell of what you're going to do. They went from four down linemen to they went like a four one six almost at one point. Well, the thing is this with it, right? It's different if that guy, if that ends like hand is down or up, right? So you could play that four three, where he walks up, puts his hands down, rushes. But when he walks up and stands up, it's still a 4-3. The other way you look at it, it's just that that backer is up or the backer is down, which is the defensive end normally. Um, I feel like with the defense, I think that whatever what Jones is doing now with the defense and what he's trying to metamorph them into is to be able to be able to play either or. And mostly what he wants to play, though. It's a 3-4. Exactly. Mostly what he wants to play. And I think what you see, man, honestly, some of the times when – you see certain defenses, and you're like, damn, you know, why is that out there, this and that? Sometimes you got a head coach that says, hey, play this. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Some like. really yeah. bright, loves that 4-3, <laughs> man. Some really bright spots from defense tonight, I thought. First off, Dwight McLaughlin's got to play more. Number two really looks good out there. Obviously, this is his first game back. And getting him back for a week before SEC play, I thought was really good. Jacoby and Guillory making a couple of uh-huh. plays tonight. If he's in the rotation, I think you're better, obviously, on the defensive line. If he's got some confidence, yeah. another touchdown for Rebs for Ole Miss. As uh, This is an absolute shootout in Oxford. Um, chasing game. That's a perfect chase game. But, but defensively, they were flying out there. Mason Smith again tonight just – He's a man. I mean, a monster. He's a man, he man. He is a and monster I, up like, front. Bro, it's – like with him, it's it's – he puts – he's in that mold, and I'm not anointing him anything, but he could be in that mold of a, of a Dorsey. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. He could be in that mold. He does feel like it early on, though. Well, the thing is this, man. Like for, for the size, strength, and agility, and he's nasty. He's that quiet nastiness. Yeah, he is. 
But these coaches, man, they got to put the boy in position for him to just take the shit over. Uh -huh. And the way he takes over games is to pair him up against whoever you have at that center position. Yeah. I am strictly just firm on him. beat him up three hours. Well, you know, the thing about that is, it, I mean, it, is, it just affects the quarterback so much. It affects the quarterback more than the defensive end. The only way the defensive end affects the quarterback that much is when that defensive end just get free, free, a free run. You know, other than that, if the left tackle, right tackle gets his hands on the end, like most of the time you're okay. Yeah. But if that middle is getting pushed, if he beats him clean, it's a problem. And if he's just pushing him back in your lap, yeah. it's, that's a pick. It's a problem. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I mean, Mason Smith is a problem. Problem. Seriously. Um, he looks bigger than everybody else on the field. He does. No, that kid is mean, too. I mean. That's the thing. The boy is mean. And I love you. Have to be that way. Oh, you do get your hands I on me every him. play, bro. <laughs> God, but they do that. Like if you haven't been to a game, they do like the tunnel before they come out. They have a camera uh -huh. in there now. It looks awesome. But Mason Smith is towering over everywhere. He's like huge. Who, if you didn't know who he was, you'd be like, who is zero? Yeah. Because that's a player. And I'm so glad he's out there every play now because he's a force. Yes, he's got in that in their net, dude. Every play, it's unbelievable. Uh, yeah, at times he feels unblockable. Um, and, and I think that the comparison to Dorsey, while, I mean, usually that's uh, LSU football taboo. Or, you know what I mean? Like, you usually kind of stay away from that one. No. Uh, he feels, he feels. No, he's that good, I mean, man. And he I'm not saying like he's that. there. He's, right, right, that's right. That's not what I'm saying. Early on. Trajectory. Yeah, hell yeah. Like, and, and, and he, and size-wise and all that, you know what I mean? Like, big, big D, big D motor was ridiculous. Uh -huh. And his quickness and agility yeah. and his lateral to be able to put that leg in the ground, go side to side, go side to side, any side, was absolutely ridiculous. His leverage, absolutely ridiculous. But both of them have their different strengths. Mason Smith is a big old agile ass dude that could go left, right, forward, and he's nasty. You nasty. know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, it's those things... And with his intelligence of leverage, you could tell that even as a young, as young as he is, he understands push pull, and he understands big as he is, he understands leverage, and that's just one of those things that make that's when you watch him play, you're impressed by his size, his ability, but when he gets to playing with the technical side of it, with the push pulls and the swims and using his hands, that's what's impressive about how young he is. Um. Man, I hope Andre Anthony is okay. Me too. I really do. I mean, he was. He he felt like time. he was coming into his own. He was really playing his, his best football. Right, yeah, he just scored player. a touchdown. That was a Stingley man. banger. Yeah, Talk all your shit up. you want about seven. That boy can come up and get you in the mouth. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, he tackled tonight. He came up and yeah, hit tonight. He, the, what, the, we've had, we've had his dad baby. on the show, and he's like, I hear all that bullshit. Yeah. You think Stingley will come up and pop you in the mouth? He, he popped him tonight, tonight, man. Twice. He the um, night. It'll be it'll be interesting to see what, what what the news is on Anthony. I guess you probably won't hear anything until well, maybe late didn't weekend. Look good. Didn't look good. You know, maybe at the end of the weekend. Uh, it, I'm Monday, sure Ogeron will have, be asked about it Monday. Uh, obviously, uh, BJ played a hell of a game. What do you have? Three sacks. I think it was two and a half. Really? Counted that. Did um, you see when the quarterback tried to stiff arm him and he, he fucking chopped him yeah. and then just came and ate his ass up? And it was just like, DJ's out for blood tonight. It was awesome. He's well, a good player. Yeah, and I guess, you know, hopefully, like we said, everything works out with Anthony. But if there is something long term on him, then uh, BJ would be the guy that would step up and be, uh, you know, well, probably I mean, first up there. Hopefully, that you get uh, 11 back. Uh, yeah, Ali Gay. Get him back. Yeah, Gay should be coming back. Mm -hmm. um, you're going to Mississippi State. Mississippi State losers today at Memphis. That, uh, that punt play goes to Memphis. I've never seen anything like that in my life. That was that was some Mike Leach stuff right there, bro. <laughs> you know Mike Leach, baby. Um, but <laughs> Mississippi pirate. Mississippi State coming off of the loss, and LSU coming off of a very confidence building win yeah. in the conference play. Still from the offensive line, you good? Would, mm -mm. would you see uh, it's still shaky? Yeah, still still some things that they have to get corrected, man. Um, and, and it's not going to all get corrected in one game, so I didn't expect them to come out and be perfect. But they did come out and play a better football game. You saw um, steps, in, in co cohesive steps. You saw guys stepping together. 
to the right or to the left on the stretch plays, on the RPO plays. So it's just those little things that you want to see improvement in. Man, we know the offense always takes a little bit longer. And with all yeah. this bullshit that's been going on, excuse me, with these yeah, guys. Yeah, man, that chicken was good, bro. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> Listen, I know what you mean, man. They, uh, they are getting better. They're getting better. Yeah. And we ran the ball a little bit better, and that's going to give them a little bit more confidence. It's going to give the backs more confidence. It's give the play. But this is the thing. You got to go out and do it this week coming up. This is the test. Yeah, this is right? the test. Yeah, this oh, is yeah. the test. Yeah, well, this I the mean, test. well the, and, test that, the, 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 the test starts this week. No, this is the test. Because it's about to get, I mean. It's squirrely. It never lets up. That I'll, bitch run go squirrely, baby. I would say that what they did tonight was a good litmus test for, did they look sharp? Yes. Did they look like they had more plays to run? Yes. Like, everything that you wanted to see against McNeese, that they didn't do, they, they did tonight. Like it, that Correct. thing looked Correct. like a weld oiled machine. Correct. Correct. Um, Correct. Correct. I, I heard somebody say it tonight, and I, I believe it was Tom Hart. So I want to give him credit that LA, it felt like LSU's game improvement was more like week one to week two tonight between McNeese. Correct. It was week one to week three. Yeah, it was I like agree kind of week one to week three. This felt like the improvement that you wait to see because you usually see the most improvement. Shocking. I agree. Between one weeks one and two, and it felt like. This Gap was kind year. of the week of right. Uh, well, that's because uh, that's because you don't really you don't really put a stamp of improvement against McNeese. Yeah, and no no shade or nothing like that. But in my opinion, the McNeese game was a letdown. Uh-huh. If I had to say that, because the McNeese game didn't feel like this game, not to me. You know what I mean? This game right here, offensively as a team, defensively, I saw improvement on both sides of the football f- football. I saw both sides. Every, everything was improvement. Everything was, was a plus. Whereas against McNeese, it was like, uh, this was that. They turned it over here. This, this. It just didn't look, look crisp. This here, this here. So this game tonight, I agree, was the week one to week three, week two, whatever you want to put it. And you saw – you, and for me, it was more from the coaching standpoint. Right? Yeah. I agree. You know what I mean? They looked much sharper. Yeah, tonight. man. Yeah, yeah. Much yeah. more crisp. Right. Because if they'd looked this way against McNeese, there would have been nearly as much water in the boat. You know, because they didn't look, they looked the exact same way they looked against UCLA in week two. And they're like, are they going to get this shit figured out or not? Right. And then if they'd have looked week three, like, like if they'd have looked in week two like they looked today, we would not have nearly as many questions. So it is trending in the right direction. And I think some of that, and this is what I wanted to get y'all's opinion on. Is I feel like there's a little bit more energy on the sidelines. It felt like everybody was kind of a little bit more bought in. Like you saw Austin Deckless come off with the late injuries, trying to fire up the crowd. Like there was a little bit more juice, and like it feels like they kind of found their spot. And I just wonder if y'all saw the well, same thing. I think this man. I think that you know sports and anything you do is all about confidence. Uh-huh. It's all about confidence, and then this sport is all about momentum and confidence. So what I think you saw was. Guys having a confidence that they could beat this team. You know, guys coming off of all the bullshit that they've gone through over the last couple of weeks and shit year. wanting to come back out and show that they are worthy to show that they are who they are. So early on, some of that shit might have been false confidence. But as you go on into the game and you see, okay, well, yeah, we, we, we got this or whatever oh, or Ooh, whatever it may slip. be, then you let these guys go in and they start playing football. And that's what you saw tonight. They shortened up the game plan. Even when they were snapping the football, none of the, none of the damn cadence was long. Yeah, It was quick. Everything was quick. Everything was based on being quick and reacting. Yeah. It was nothing about thinking. It was Coach O and those guys. That's why I said I took my hat off to them because they did a good job. Um, with taking the, 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 the thinking part of out the game, everything was quick. RPO, quick. If he steps up, pop the, pop, uh, pop the slant behind him. If he stops back, hand it off. You know, it wasn't anything where you had to do all of the thinking. It was just reacting and playing football. And, and my hat's off to them because they got him back to that tonight. Yeah, it was. It felt very much. I mean, that <laughs> opening drive – Offensively, I mean that was that was as much of a confidence builder in the play caller and the players of taking he, shots down the field and running the football yeah, and, and the thing getting about to the wide side, and getting stretches good. and 
And yeah, uh, I mean, they were crisp getting to the line of scrimmage. I mean, they were getting off the ball. I mean, it looked as if... It looked like a different team. It did. They were playing with a lot more energy tonight. Um, you know who brings that? Oh, 80. Besh? Besh is yeah. out there yeah. flexing on everybody. He's definitely yeah. one of them. He's definitely one of those energizers. I thought Deion Smith guys. brought some energy, man. I think, I think Deion Smith brought a lot of energy. I was about to mention him just now. He brought a whole bunch of energy. I mean, he brings a lot of energy. He was that touchdown like catch. Where he mosses that kid? He just yeah. plucked yeah. it from I mean, him. And just, you're like, who is and this? And then he took it from the side of him. Uh-huh. When he jumped, he took it from the side. That was an unbelievable catch. That's, listen, and, you know, as happy as we are about the, 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 the freshman group of receivers, this is where it all comes into play because we have to keep these guys progressing and we have to keep the offensive coordinator and the quarterback progressing. If they progress and understand, um, Max under, Mad Max understands that, hey, at any time I, could give, I, could, I don't have to pass up guys. I could throw the ball. I could give the ball to any one of these guys. Yeah. Once we get to that where he becomes Isaiah Thomas or Steve Nash and just distributes the football and assists, then we then we cooking with grease, baby. Uh, as always, we appreciate you being out there. Make sure that you like, share, comment on the post. That puts it in front of more people, and that's what we're trying to that do. We're trying to grow this thing. Might help. Hit the subscribe button. But all that uh, all that helps us get in front of more people, and that's obviously what we're trying to do here. Let's um, go. We're going to be here every Saturday. Ro was cooking, cooked a feast tonight. Uh, we had chicken, we had steak, we had sausage, we had asparagus. Uh, don't be shaking your head. All that's in there. You can go grab some. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah, Lizzo, y'all go baby. get some, man. Y'all can uh, eat up. That's what I'm saying. No, he's feeding over there. He's drooling. He, <laughs> man, he knows he can get some. He's shaking his head like he. Like, we ain't have none. Right. It's in there, we baby. Got, we got plywood in the walls. Had to figure uh, out. Shit. Yeah. So I know we said we were going to be here during Go the fourth hard, quarter. Baby. Um, and the UDL got a little upgrade here uh, today. Swing that thing, baby. We got <laughs> some new, see what we, we got can do some, now. Uh, some new cameras. <laughs> yeah. Got some new lights. Swing that thing, baby. We got a row cam if y'all want that. We got that all types of stuff. Put that row cam. We're going to have a, uh, uh, what are we going to call it? We're going to call it a. Uh, we be calling it Roll with Row. Ranting. Ranting with, rant with Rose? Rose rant. Okay. Yeah, we're going to rant, Rose baby. Royce. Watch that Rose swing. Royce Make sure rant, everything's baby. cleaned up around here. Yeah. <laughs> swing it, baby. Um, look at uh, Ole Miss. Ole Miss trying to get three before half here. I can't believe they are. Oh, look at they the row cam. Yeah. yeah. Stop playing. <laughs> In here. F3, uh, baby. Stop playing. Shout out to Ken Anio. F.A. That was good with Kenny the other day. F.A.? Um, yeah, man, we about to take this shit. Warren Easton came back and won that game last night. Warren Easton did come That's back and won. Hey, you know what? Ken was saying that they was going to win that football game. I left that football game, dude. I left like at, I don't know, I think uh, Scotlandville was, no, nah, they was losing. Warren Easton was up by like two scores or something when I left or a score. But listen, Scotlandville gave that game away, though. Yeah, Scotlandville gave that Obviously, game away. They were yeah, complete control because I left at halftime. To go to exactly, soccer. they were in complete control, offensively, defensively, everything. Complete control, man, and decided to throw the go empty and throw the football like every down yeah. up twenty one nothing. Got Cam Cameron calling plays, and that's what happened. <laughs> that's what happened. Um, it was terrible. Tell me what you saw from Max tonight, because I thought that was his best game as a college football player tonight. Even last year? Even last year. Against yeah. Florida? But given the circumstances, Just, everything back yeah, against you're the probably wall, right. I mean, where yeah, it yeah, seems like Florida, it ain't right. The Florida game is probably his best yeah, Florida, game. Yeah, no, no, that, you're right. Like, Florida yeah, yeah. game is his best game, but in terms of going just, into this situation, this felt like it could have been a loss, dude, if you would have seen him play. Tonight. He looked like he was very uh, – he does still love to throw it over the middle, but him being able to get outside like that was – such a stride in the right direction because he heard everything about we ain't throwing it deep and then first play uncorks it. I think he played better last year against Florida. I mean that was a game of his life. Um, well, I mean, Jordy said he played the best game ever. No, so no, I got no, to take it back ever. to last year too. Yeah, so Florida's right. But You're right. You're right. As far as I tried to help. 
As, no, I understand. <laughs> no, but I do understand what you're saying, though. Yeah. As far as like everything that was going on, the mantra coming off, all the damn questions and everything. No, I understand that. I think he stepped up. Like yeah. I, I know what you're saying. I think he stepped up. He's never been this like. This is the thing. Though. confidence like this in his life. No, he's. This is the thing. I think that. Just like we um, say it, and just like that, he uh, he hears it. You know, I'm not letting it go. I'm not doing this, and I'm not doing that. So I think he came out tonight with it on his mind as far as we're superior to. And I think they all did. I think they all did to an extent. Coaches as well. Like we just gonna try some shit. We're not gonna be scared to whatever, whatever. We should beat this team. Da, 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 da. And, and and I think that was part of it. So we're going to go out and we're going to be comfortable. And I think it's going to help him going forward. I think Max did play the best game where it comes to, like, the situation. The Florida game last year was his best game to me. But the situation was different. You weren't going to do shit. You yeah. weren't in there comfortable as hell. No right? pressure. Yeah, like, that's yeah. Exactly. He, so I, that's why I say I get it. I understand what you were saying. So I think in the totality of what the situation is this year, I think, yes. I think he answered the bell tonight. I think he had they, to. Yeah, he de- definitely. I think he hand- answered the bell tonight. I think he uh, played really well. I think he played comfortable. I think he played within himself. I think he let the ball go when he needed to. I think that uh, I still think it's a lot that has to be fixed and he has a lot to work on. But as far as we talking about progression, he absolutely got better tonight. Uh, and they've legitimately got two quarterbacks, man. I mean, Nussmeyer comes in there, and you really don't lose much. You know, and I'm not create uh, no, no quarterback controversy. No, no, no. But but he just he's, he's electric. He just he's got a little it. You know what I mean? He got a little row in him. You know what I mean? You put him in the game, and you're like, oh shit! He might yeah, throw a tutty. You know what I mean? No, he, like, I mean, th- this is what you're gonna get with him, and he, and I think at some point this year he's gonna play. I think he's going to have to play, whether it be a critical drive, whether it be a critical series, whether it's a, you know, something's going to happen to where he's going to have to play football. And I think games like this is what prepares him for us further on down the road and giving him the experience of, you know, running around, playing a little bit. So I think he's going to be good, man. I honestly do. I think he's going to be good. I think he's going to compete every time, every time he goes out there. Um, I think that you're going to have to, you're going to get some great plays, and you're going to get some not so great plays sometimes. But right now, with him, if he decides to play, that's the job of of Coach Pease and those guys to 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 know exactly and put him in a situation to be successful. And it feels like Max kind of took a little bit out of out of Nussmeier's playbook. Like, fuck it, if we're going to throw it, let me throw it. Like, I'm not going to let somebody take my job. Right. But the real question I want to ask is. Where's your confidence with this offensive line in the run game? Because it still wasn't there until late in the game. Like some, a lot of these yards were added up in garbage time, and when they were trying to run the ball, they really couldn't. And when you get into SEC play, what they do, they're one-dimensional in my mind as of right now. I think that the little things that they try, that they that they well, some were success, very successful tonight. But I think some of the things that they try to do because they know that right at this point where they are, I don't know whether it's communication, whether it's scheme, whatever it is, they can't just say, I'm going to move you guys off the football. So what they're doing is to keep it honest, they're running the screens. They're running the, the, the RPOs. They're running the wide um, um, sweeps yeah. and the stretch. So those are all parts of what they're trying to implement in the pass game. They're running the, the uh, what are quick toss. Got? Yeah, exactly, mm-hmm. all that. So all that is part of the running game instead of just lining up and handing it to the running back. And they're trying to do that. So my confidence in the running in the running in the excuse me in the offensive line is as much confidence as the offense as the offensive coordinator and the play caller have in them. And I think that you yeah. saw when you went to their strengths. The offensive line strength, which our offensive linemen are moving guys. They're athletic. They're moving. They're not. It's like a zone run offensive line. So that's line. what you have. That's what you saw tonight when you have the quick push, when you have the RPO, and they're trying to find a hole. These guys, the offensive line does not have to move these guys in any or, or direction. They just have to take them where they have to go. And that's the kind of, I mean, that's, that's kind of what I saw tonight, and it helped. It should help. Especially with having the threats of how they were moving Boutte to get him the ball. They put yeah. in a kick returner. Like, they, they heard his qualms whenever. He was kind of a little agitated during his press conference where he's like, 
I mean, I think we could have started a little quicker. And look how they started this game. Like, they, they're they listening to everything they're saying. Like, the players, like, they're taking all of this information in and trying to help them. But the way that they're getting Boutte the ball is exactly what they need to be doing. Well, and like... Rowe pointed out. He's the best thought, player. In the, he might be the best player in the country. Well, I, I thought what, what 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 you pointed out also is that it was good to see other players being targets and other players being uh, legitimate options. That right. that now you've really got to defend against Jack Besh. You've got to defend against Deion Smith. Right. I mean, you got to defend against even Devonta Lee when he comes I mean, into just, the game. You've got to find some weapons. Just I mean, think about it though. Like last year, we're talking about Booty now, right? As a guy, and part, like you said, possibly one of the best players in college football. Now, the other guys that we talk about, just bring it back to last year where you have a Chase and a Marshall. And so that's why I say that these guys, you got to get them involved because those are your booties from, from this year. Those are your Chase and Marshalls and now the other guys. So those other guys become superstars. Booty was the other guy that's now the guy. So it's not like these guys, these guys don't talented. have the ability. That's what I'm saying. That's my whole point of it is don't just get fixated on this because the more you can spread it around and the more targets you have and the more you're not hesitating to say, okay, that's not who, that, who I want to get it to. Let me look here. The better off we are as an offense. Because Max isn't a, a quarterback that's going to wow you, that's going to um, 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 do the things like a, like, 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 Even like, like a Justin Fields or these guys. But what he, what he can do is use a plethora of talent that's around him. And pick you apart. Yeah. He was, I mean, he, he was seeing it tonight, man. I mean, he was finding it. I mean, the things you were bitching about early on, about, like, the blitz, the pickup, finding the hot, all that stuff, I mean. He got him out of it. That's where Jack Besh really made some money tonight, man. He got him out of it. Yeah. How he got much, him out of it. How much does that make a difference to you from them not going to check with me? Is that all it was? Was it being able just to kind of go quick? Because they went quick on almost every completion. They yeah. were getting back to the line and just letting that thing rip. That was that RPO. Yeah. yeah. The RPO was more implemented tonight in the passing game and on third downs. And they were in more manageable third downs tonight. Every third down tonight was in third and 12, third and 15, third and nine. They were in more manageable third, third downs. Four, third you know what I mean? So when you end those, you can have crossing routes. You can dump it off to the backs. You can check one side and then come back to Besh in the middle of the field and he run for it. So that's why I said Max did a great job tonight of just – getting the ball out of his hands when he saw he played really well with his eyes tonight. He trusts his eyes immensely tonight, and that's what he has to continue to do. Uh, if you've got any questions, jump inside of the chat. You can get them in. I've got Facebook open, too, so I'm watching that as well. Oh. Uh, if you want to uh, look there, and we'll also uh, be inside of YouTube, obviously, if you want to chat about anything with uh, Rohan, anything that you saw on this college football Saturday. Uh, did you pay attention to Alabama, yeah. Florida? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What'd you think about Bryce Young in that game? He looked good. He did, man. I've been impressed Especially with the Bryce way Young since last year, though. Yeah, I'm a Bryce Young fan. He, uh, How can he not just, be? the kid's poised, man. He can make all the throws. He, the situation does not seem too big for him. It seems like he's been here before. I mean, he, you know, that's that's the, the the comfort zone you get in when you have all the all that talent around you, though. Know? And you know that you don't have to do it on your own and you don't have to make all the plays. So I was impressed with Bryce Young today. And like you pointed out earlier, man, that, that thing with Alabama, that's the, that is like the perfect, perfect scenario for Coach Saban and that club. Coming out with a with victory but not playing great, all the mistakes, especially defensively, he's going to be able to, He's got bulletin board material for the entire year off that one game. Ain't yeah, no D's nuts jokes coming out. Yeah. Yeah, 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 ain't nobody going to a press conference this week. He, uh, they that, ain't going to be riding around on those scooters. We know that. <laughs> <laughs> That's for real. Uh, but that is exactly, if Saban could draw up the perfect win, something perfect early in the season where he could teach all year on. All right. This is, I mean, I, I mean, told you, son of a bitch, is all off season, and now here we are. We're about to do it my way. They have every to be day. In. Yep. Now, I mean, it's uh, it's gonna be interesting to the see the old how. Lane rat poison. That's Y'all right, were breeding your. Speaking of uh, speaking of Lane and rat poison, old Miss rolling right now over two lane halftime 
over in Oxford. Hate to see that happen. Um, but yeah, I mean, look, t- t- today I thought LSU deserved a lot of credit. In fact, uh, Andre Ross, I was looking inside of the chat, says uh, you got to give the, the 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 coaching staff, Owen, the crew, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of credit for the freshmen in the way that they were coming out here tonight and playing. Uh, because there were freshmen all over the field making plays, but even some of the you know the younger guys, a guy like we mentioned earlier, Dwight McLaughlin. I mean, he played really, really good on defense. I thought tonight. I mean, it was good to see him back from injury, absolutely back out there playing, making an impact, and 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 going into SEC play with a little confidence. And I think that's what Coach O's been trying to do is kind of get this this squad healthy. He's held out a lot of people that probably could have played. And he's like, we can get through this three-game stretch. Like, just hold them out. And now to see a Dwight McGrother and get some reps, like, this defense looks a little bit different with those guys out there. You get to see a, a Deion Smith who hasn't played yet, and he's like, is this the second-best receiver on the team? Like, automatically, well, he hasn't I th- played. I, I think that but I'm every saying, I think week you could say that. Yeah, they were, yeah. Tr- but they were trying <laughs> you know to get, I mean? yeah, yeah, it could be anybody. Right. But they were just trying to get him healthy aside for probably Booty, Mississippi State. Aside from Booty, you could say that you could you could be able to say that any week because any week it could be just yeah, a guy could. that's gets off. Could be Chris Hilton. Could. You know yeah. what I mean? It could be anything any week with those guys because those guys are so talented, um, so very talented. A lot of people asking inside of the chat and wanting to know does does Corey Kiner feel like Clyde Edwards Hilaire? I mean, does his skill set kind of feel like that? I hadn't Poor seen him catch Clyde. it. Poor man's Clyde. He could catch it. Poor man's Clyde. I think that's a he's a little bit thicker. Good huh? analogy. Not as not as quick, in my opinion, right. as Clyde, as Clyde, especially laterally. And that's where you you make your bones as a running back is be able to go laterally and then start up just as quick as you go laterally and accelerate. And that's what Clyde did so well. He could go lateral and then put his foot in the ground and get north and south just as quick as he can laterally. And then, and I mean Corey's close. He's in that mold, but but in my opinion, he's not there. He's not Clark. If yeah. you can get Armani and Corey on the same page, get them both healthy at the same time, that could make a Clyde. And they'll be able to play off each other. Yes, yeah. yeah. like you get a little thunder like lightning. Well, they're face. a great complement to one yeah. another. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but good, they, good they, compliment they like may be timing this thing up one. as far as getting these guys back at the right time. I mean – it was good to get Deculus the reps tonight. He did come off the field, but it looks like he'll be okay and ready to go next week. Obviously, you will wait and see on Cam Wire. I thought Xavier Hills had some really – he's had some positive spots. I don't think that it's all been good, but I don't think that it's been overly bad. He's he's played really um, – he, he's played – he's done some good things. He's just been a little inconsistent, I guess, would, would, would probably be the – the grade over the last two weeks. Absolutely. Are you starting to see the new coaching kind of come through on the offensive line to where they understand what he wants them to do and losing the old way? Like, it seems like they're kind of a little bit more put together. Like, in, in sync, I guess, is the best way to put it. Well, I think that as you get guys back and you get guys running together for a couple games or running together consistently in practice and all that, I think that that builds the continuity with the offensive line. Offensive linemen is all about reps, Together. reps, 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 reps. Hearing that same voice, hearing that voice, hearing that check, and all that. So I think as they get to playing together more, and the, the thing about it is, like, you don't have a lot of time. Yeah. You know what I mean? You don't have a lot of time. You're getting ready to get, kick it off, baby. So, the, but the more yeah, they right. get to playing that's together right. and hearing that's it, the right. better they get. That's and right. right now, we got to get a lot better going into SEC play. How underrated is having an offensive line? Because it feels like people always love to look at skill Man, positions. And as know, a quarterback, I feel I like. I don't really think that real real people that know football. Really get it, it? Take it. I don't think they take it lightly. So I think that if you're just a fan of skill positions and a fan of football, I mean, excuse me, a fan of touchdowns. and Just a fantasy player. Fantasy football yeah, player. player. You're a fantasy player. Right. But if you know football, you don't you don't take the that's offensive what, line. That's why, bro, I think all. like. I would sign five to seven offensive linemen every year. And you know what? If I lost two of them to attrition every year, I'd be okay with it. Because I would say, I'm going to find the best five every year, but really I'm looking for the best eight because I know if we're going to do anything, if you're going to be a championship-level team, you really got to have eight dudes that you can really count on. Like, 
if I lose my right guard in the swamp in the fifth game of the season, mm. I got to look on the sideline and say, hey, here's what we talked about in recruiting. You're up. You know what I mean? Right now, they don't. They don't have confidence in that guy. Your OD line. That, that your, your offensive line and your defense line got to be solidified. And I feel like they are like that on the defensive line. Like they when you look up tonight and you see, you see Jacoby and Guillory Oof. making plays, you see Jaquel and Roy getting up from the bottom of the pile a lot of the times. Obviously, Mason Smith coming along. Joseph Evans, I thought, played really he good was game breaking the pocket. tonight. I mean, he was. Flying around out there. That's the pick of the uh, year. That's that's one of the best plays I've ever seen. That's the pick of the year. I mean, that's that. that the, oh, never, he never man. brought the other hand. Never, too. That's the never thing. brought it in. It. That was the interception in Oklahoma, so Nebraska today by by Graham. Must have been nice. The safety. <laughs> that was unbelievable. I mean, that was looking at Bigfoot over there. I can't Fourth see down. <laughs> I mean, have you heard Gus? Jo- oh, yeah, <laughs> have heard Gus tweeted, Johnson. Yeah, I tweeted it Gus out. Johnson's call on it. I mean, he. Oh, Dell, step aside. I mean, he has a heart attack. <laughs> it's amazing. He's like, oh my god. That um, was amazing. It, it was bad. amazing. That play it ain't was amazing. Than Odell catch. No. I don't know. That he over, he over scooped it though. That man, I mean, it's still I cool. Care. I don't care about no damn over scoop. That boy NFL. caught that shit with two fingers. Oh, don't NFL. Win. That boy caught that shit with two fingers, man. NFL, man. I, he caught it with two fingers. Two, two. Um, two a lot fingers. of people asking, like uh, Hunter Dago, wanting to know any update on Andre friends. Anthony. I don't know if I don't know if there. You'll probably won't learn anything tonight. Until Monday, yeah. Uh, probably Monday at Ogeron's press conference. Will be the uh, the Cause, earliest because they're not gonna volunteer no information. No, uh, you say that Monday. Coach O will get in front of that microphone and say something. Yeah, Coach O ain't volunteering nothing tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Is but. this his biggest flex he's gonna have at the podium on Tuesday? Hell no. No. For what? No, no, no. I'm not talking about this year. Like, is he no. finally gonna Hell be able no. to feel comfortable? Hell no. That team looked better than he. I don't give a shit. It was <laughs> yeah. Central Michigan. That's who we play, right? Yes. Central Michigan. That's yeah, I don't give play. a shit. Listen. You got to understand, man, like, there's a standard, dog. So the standard wasn't the, the limp through Central Michigan, just like the standard wasn't the limp through McNeese. So, no, we got better, but ain't shit been answered. We got better. We got better offensively, better defensively, better, which you should. Let's not get it twisted. Like, when we bring it down and think that, okay, you know, we're going to accept these little victories and accept this, then that brings down the standard of where you think your program are, where you think you, where you, where you want your program to be. And you don't want your program to be a, a, a fucking satisfied with, okay, we beat Central Michigan. And I'm not, and there's no pun to Central Michigan. Yeah. You don't want your program to be, okay, right. we did this against McNeese. No, you expected to do that shit. So, no, the hell yeah, he still got shit to prove. That's nothing. Oh, no, I expect he has shit to prove, but I'm just saying in terms of no, the no first flexing. two games, no and now flexing. he's finally no like, way. look, we no got flexing. this thing. Hell there's no. A, there's not even a positive No, message. Lizzo, no flexing, man. <laughs> ain't no flexing, bro. 100%, man. There's no flexing Ain't no flexing. It's Central Michigan. It's no flex. We LSU. We SEC. We big dogs. Ain't no flexing. No, hell no. We expect to do that. Walk through that shit. Take your head off. Go have you something to eat. Kiss your mama. Hug your girlfriend. Do whatever you take do. Take your purple jersey business, off. Business as usual, man. Keep it going. Like, like when you get happy about shit like that, and 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 it's. I'm not saying don't be happy for a victory. You worked hard all week. You definitely you passed the test this week. But that's it. Like the picture is way bigger than Central Michigan. Like fuck Central Michigan. Yeah, absolutely. I mean that was a scrimmage. I mean, really. And I mean, no pun to Central Michigan. Yeah, you know no, what I'm saying? Because no, I got partners at, at the no. crib that played at Central Michigan. But Central Michigan is not LSU. The only point I'm trying to make is after McNeese and they came out so flat, it feels like, all right, maybe we finally have the tires rolling in the right direction. All yeah, in. it's improvement. Right. That's it. But they didn't have any improvement from week one to week two. So That's week two to week three, they did. Is that where Brown went? Nah. Where did A.B.? Turn? Where did he go? Where did I, think he did go I think he did go to Central, Central Michigan. Michigan. Central Michigan. He's a Chippewa. Was he a Chippewa? I didn't know that. Um... It's Tom Brady's third wide receiver. Yes, he went to Central Michigan. Central Michigan. Sixth-round pick? Fourth-round? Third-round pick? I think he was a fourth-round pick. Yeah, I think he was a fourth-round um, pick, too. So he's six. A- mm. a- mm. All right. A- Jack a- Besh. You- I love Jack Besh's night. He don't do nothing but catch first downs, baby. First downs and touchdowns. That he touchdown was crazy. And he don't drop the ball. Mm-mm. Um... Who was your most impressive player on the offense tonight, Ro? Offense? Yeah. Shit, Max. I agree. 
Deion Smith. Max. Max. Does Deion Smith, was it well, just that? Was, just the he, addition of somebody else that can trust the was, field? He was impressive. Deion Smith was impressive. But I, the reason I say Max is I graded Max last week as like a D. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? C at the best. And so for him to play that position this week the way he did, the efficiency, going in the right direction, he made vast improvement this week, in my opinion. And it was it wasn't the big plays. He still missed, in my opinion, he still missed some some pass plays. Still hung some balls up too long, things of that nature. Ooh, that's a penalty. Oh oh, wow. of, that's a penalty. Of course, that's a penalty. Things of that nature. Ball boy got this lit up. Hey, ball boy got this. flipped. Ball oh boy. Ball boy got flipped. Oh like boy. Flat jacks, baby. He pop, he got up. lit up. He, he never up. saw it coming. Yeah, he did pop yeah, up. He got to keep his head on a swivel, baby. He did pop back up. But he took it. Yeah, he took it. He never <laughs> said. I mean, you got to see boy that. Like, they brought no. in our own towel boy. You got to <laughs> see that. He got to be a rookie. You got to see you that, gotta baby. You got to see that. <laughs> he I mean, that be ball rookie, is coming though. right at you, man. He has to be a rookie. That this was unbelievable. This is my personal hell of not being able to watch football while y'all are watching football. <laughs> this is unbelievable. Damn. I think Jack Besh had a good night. He had a I great night. I think he played night. well. I think Jack played well. He had a great night. He but played well. Would, He's in the right spot, though, right? I mean, right. Is that where you use him? Like, I mean... Is he a slot receiver when no. it's all? He not see, in my opinion, he's not he's an H. He's a hybrid tight end. You know, he could occupy he could beat my linebackers and he could beat safeties. You match him up against a cornerback, he'll have problems. Now he'll out physical him, possibly, but that makes it harder for him to catch the football. But against linebackers and safeties, psh, money all day, baby. Yeah. And he money. made a few a few chip blocks that had me confident in him as a tight end. And well, that's what the H is, yeah. really. It's just a, it's, it's, the H is a tight end. And it, it is. Yeah. It's just a receiving tight end. Isn't that what LSU has been missing, though? Because they relied so much, if you want to go back to them running the Joe Brady offense, they're missing that Thad Moss that could chip and get out, or you can motion him and get him out to make it three. If it's two by two, you make it well, three by the two. the offense that they was running wasn't – They that, wasn't trying they to let they him do that. Well, they weren't trying to do that. This is a whole new offense and a whole new uh, where they're directing and trying to get the ball. So the offense of the previous years, they weren't trying to do that. The first points wasn't, you know, trying to establish or get the point, get the ball to the tight end. The last tight end that caught any couple balls from us was the cat that's at the Raiders right now. You know, um, I mean? so Foster Mora. Foster, yeah, Morrow. Uh, but I'm saying with that, that's what they did. They they had yeah, him in that H chipped, role where they, he would chip and be mm-hmm. able to. And I think they're trying to do that with. With Jack Besh, but he's not that big yet. But yeah, I but feel, you, but you don't he's still have, a mismatch. Yeah, but you, you, I think people underestimate what a chip block is. A chip block isn't a devastating block to it's kill right. the guy. It's just yeah. to slow him yeah. down. Take a step That's away all from it him. is. It's an offensive stunt. And it's it's a slow down so the offensive lineman can position himself to better close out. You know what I mean? All mm-hmm. it is to help. Off. He knows that he's gonna get help from the back coming from the outside. So he hunkers down inside because he knows the guy's coming back to him and makes his block easier and gives that quarterback the extra half a second or second. Usually when you chip block, it's game plan and you know exactly where you're going with the football. And usually on the chip block, the back that's chipping is nowhere in getting the football. Uh huh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, which it looks like they've got to make a concerted effort to get Corey Connor the football out of the backfield. I mean, I you know, who, you know who the chip blocker was in New England. Uh, Kevin, Kevin Falk. Falk, exactly. How uh, big is he? But right. you know what I'm saying. Right. I was about to ask you that. How much do you take into account, like who you have at running back and who can block? And you're like, all right, I have Kev Falk to my right, well, so I'm good here. Football. Like I know he's going to do his job. Oh yeah, it's such a situation of football, and you have to be comfortable. That's why when you hear coaches talk about, you know, when they rave so much about young running backs picking up the blitz and able to uh, pick up blitz stunts and things of that nature because it's hard. It's very hard to do when you swing in protection and you doing this and all that stuff. So it's very hard to do. It's very, I mean, you want, you're going to have coaches call plays based on who they want in the game because we may yeah. be taking a shot now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, all right, we'll take a couple of questions here before we get out of here on this uh, Saturday night as LSU takes care of uh, Central Michigan and moves to three and uh, two and one 
uh, on the season as they begin SEC play. They will play in Starkville at Davis Wade Stadium next Saturday. That game will be at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, so we will have a post game somewhere around 2.30, 3 o'clock for you. In the morning. Uh, as soon as that game goes final. Love that. Uh, as we'll have uh, some evenings to go uh, and watch, watch more football. Uh, as uh, tough job, man. It has been. It's been. Uh, what, what did you think about last week? What did you think about the NFL Sunday last week? Sucked. Jameis Winston was. It sucked. Besides Jameis. Wow. What do you mean? Jameis you played like, well. You didn't like KC in Cleveland. It was okay. But I love the Patriots Jameis. lost. That's why it's upset. <laughs> <laughs> nah, the Patriots are fine. Even though they should have won. They should have won. They should have won that damn game. They should have won that game. Yeah, they should have won that game. But listen. I was very pleased with Jameis Winston. Gotta be, huh? You hear me? And the reason I was pleased is because it, it just, and I hope he continues to play like that, and I don't see no reason why he should not. But it's just, you know, I love when guys prove people wrong. Yeah. And Jameis been hearing all the, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm a 30 um, interception guy. Jameis, 27, 28 years old, in the prime of his Right now, football, life. football, right? And why wouldn't you think this guy that's put all this into the off season, changed his body, been behind Drew Brees, the great Sean Payton, been in that organization? Why wouldn't you think that he's going to come out and be successful, especially when you could keep Taysom Hill in the role that he's used to playing? I love the marriage of of Winston. Yeah, and man. That's why I say they need to give him. It's going. After this year, you need to go ahead and just extend him and yeah. give him the long term and solidify him. Yeah, because he's going to do well. I think they'll probably do that mid season if he shows enough. He's going to do well. I, think, I mean, did I think the Saints not do a perfect job of hiding him last year and not putting him on the field because they said they didn't do it on purpose, but they put Taysom out, Taysom Hill out there to make sure that they could keep Jameis on but a one year deal. And look at what he's done. Is is when you look at offense, is Sean Payton that good at it to where he puts you in situations to where you just like you almost can't lose? I think Sean Payton does a good job of putting guys, especially as quarterbacks, in position, and 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 not just in position to make plays, but in position to make big plays. You know what I mean? And yeah. and I think even now, with with the addition of Jameis, I think that Sean Payton sees an even more advantage with Jameis. And I'm not taking anything away from Drew Brees. He sees more of an advantage in some things that he can do. And Jameis isn't in the maturation of this offense as um, Drew was. Yeah, right. But but he's he got un- more plays available to him. Absolutely. Absolutely. He could push the ball down the field. He could push the deep outs. He could push the deep crossers. And it doesn't have to be timing. These guys, and you got to understand, man, like, it also helps the receivers. It also uh-huh. helps the receivers that the receivers yeah. know, like, listen, Ball's I don't have to here. be perfect. Yeah. Like, it's going to get on me a little bit quicker. Right. You know, I could get a little, I could do more to get a little bit more separation and now a little bit more run after the catch. The ball, I don't have to box them and position them like basketball. So, as great as Drew was, there were some things that, you know, couldn't do. Absolutely. He just couldn't do. Absolutely. I mean, physically, Absolutely. he just couldn't do it. And if you're a wide receiver in that system, you have to be like, I'm, when you're with Drew, you're like, I don't know if I'm even good. Like, what am I running this route for? Like, he can't reach me. Right. But now when you have Well, you know Jameis, that route like, is just a clear out. Right. Like, they're trying to go underneath. You know what I mean? You know, you know where you're going with it. You know it's just a clear out, and you're not going to get, especially in the first 35 to 40 yards. Yeah. If you don't get it there on a deep ride, then you you know you just a decoy. Uh, how good is Camaro? Oh, no, he's real good. Like I mean, he's MVP good, right? Yeah, Camaro's real good. I mean, if you and, and this is and that's the other thing too. You have that weapon when you have that's like you know McCaffrey, Kevin yeah. Falk. Yeah, he's, he's in the mold. Kevin Marshall Falk, guys. Yeah, all those Marshall, yeah. oh, Marshall Falk, all those guys, man. It's like um, it's your ultimate security blanket. Sure. Because you know that he's better than the other guy every time. Every guy, yeah, ten out of ten times. Every time, one on right. one, he's gonna beat you <laughs> every, every time. time. Yeah, every time. And then you know this: if it's zone coverage, then he's gonna he's gonna command two on the zone coverage. So now you know there's a mismatch sure. somewhere. Somewhere. So find the mismatch, and usually the mismatch shows itself real quick. Who was that guy for you in your career? Who was the best? One on one guy <laughs> that was better than everybody every time in your career. 
Josh. Yeah. I mean, oh. Josh. Let me see my my. I mean, yeah, Josh. And if it wasn't Josh, Dominique Davis. Dominique Davis. Oh. Honestly, so good. rookie of the year for the Texans. He was, Dominique Davis was, was like so dominant. Davis. Cock strong. Dude. Well, I mean, wasn't he like my size? Like, yeah, not, not, not but wider, but like thick, but yeah. darker and thicker. Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I listen. Double D, bro. Double <laughs> D, dude. Double D never got. I don't think he ever got the a fair shake. The, the love. I think he got a fair shake. I just yeah. never think he got the recognition that he deserved as far as like how, Not how much players. of an animal he was, man. Yeah. Like this kid, that he breed, dude. He breed pit bulls, didn't he? Yeah. The Is thing like was he, though, yeah. though, that he he he. He never said anything. Uh huh. Like never, never, ever, ever said anything. Didn't Saban love him? No, everybody loved him because he never said anything. But you knew he was a dog. Yeah, he was. You know what I mean? Like he never a dog. When I say the dude never said double D, never said anything. That punt return he had against he, West Virginia. Dude, I mean, against Virginia Tech, they got called back. When that he, totally changed the game. He was a. He was an animal, man. I that's mean, how you know he's animal, a dog. dog. He'll go back there on a punt return, run off on kickoff. I don't give a shit. Wherever you need 31, I'm going to be out there. But he asked a good question. Him and Tofield? Dude, 31 and 22. You're talking about, you're talking about, you're talking about a good, day. you're yes. talking about a one-two punch, They were dog. great. You're talking God. about a one-two punch? I mean, punch? my senior year in shit. high school, or my junior year in high school, row, the top three running backs in the state were LeBrandon Tofield, Josh Reed, and uh, Dominic, Dominic Davis, Davis and they all were one, two, and three in the state. I mean, because Josh Reed, that's crazy. The thing about him was when when you got him to rock after. I mean, when he over. made the catch, you, gotta you couldn't him, tackle baby. him. He was like a running back. <laughs> oh, Looks like Boutte. You got to tackle him. Nah, he won like him. Uh uh-uh. uh. Boutte no. was like way faster. Uh-huh. Like way no, I'm just talk- I'm talking about like the faster. slippery where it's like he's dead yeah, to yeah, rice, yeah, but he's yeah, not. Yeah. The difference. The thing with, about Josh Reed that he was just always so open. No, why? That's, that's because Josh never broke down. He never had to break no stride tells. to come out of a cup. His, if you ever seen Josh, man, his thighs was like Kevin, uh-huh. like just huge. Back. And so whenever he caught the football, or even running his routes, where a lot of guys would have to chatter, 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 and then cut. The Josh fire. wouldn't do that. He would just. Pew, oh, pew, and guys will have to chatter, ch- take three chatter steps to catch up to him. Where he's taking one and he's gone. He dropped them hips and sink them hips and he's gone. And he's gone and, and motherfuckers looking at him like, damn, he was just right beside me. And he's not fast. He's four, five, four, six at best. Right. You know what I'm saying? So right. with the Buffalo. When he came right. out them hips, though, that his se- I tell people all the time, dog, like his separation, once he came out, of, once he broke, was four yards. Yeah. Because you motherfuckers chattering. I mean, the catch up, it was crazy. That day y'all chopped up Alabama. <laughs> his like 10th and 11th catch, he's still wide open. That's why I tell people, it's I'm like, like, man, I, it was easy. It was easy throwing to him, dog. It wasn't like. People I forget had to he had like a 60 yard touchdown call back. Call back against Bama. Yeah, we supposed to and be And Annie was in the open field with one and got it got not, pushed not out from behind. From behind. behind. I mean, the back. Yeah. We spo- I'm supposed to be over 600 and he's yeah. supposed to be. <laughs> I'm serious. I know. I know. I'm supposed to be over 600 and he's supposed, to be, uh-huh. nah, and he's supposed to be over 400. Nobody touching that. And he's supposed to be over 400. For real. If you're a quarterback, if you're Max Johnson, you have a Josh Reed or a Kayshawn Butte, how often are you just like, I know where one is or I know where 25 is? Like it, on these early downs or like third and fours, like. I'm just going there. Well, this is the thing. You got to design some plays for him to get the ball out of his hands and get the ball in those guys' hands quick, Booty's hands quick. And what Max has to understand and know that, okay, yeah, this is my guy. You know what I mean? I want to go there. But I don't want to force it to him. So I'm always, even if he's my, even if he is my first read, my first read and he's open, I'm going to give him the football. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to say bypass my first read if it's not him just to get to him. Because what he has to understand is, Defensive coordinators know that as well. And even if he thinks that he's not putting up or showing tendencies, he is. And as a young guy, you don't want to show those tendencies. You want to be able to go through your progression. Still want to have that bailout guy. But if you go through, go through your progression and, sh- and shit gets crazy, then you want, okay, where's one? You know what I mean? Well, how much did you, like, manipulate? Like, I know I'm going to one, but I want to <laughs> show up. Like, just to it get was that only on, It was one. only on certain plays that I know were his. Okay. Like if I knew Josh, Josh ran the snake rock better than anybody in the 
history of anybody I've ever seen. And it's because he could get out his cuts. So I know that on snake routes. Nobody else. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. hell no. And I don't have to look. No, all I'm doing on a snake route, if it's single high safety or if it's split safety, all I'm doing is holding. If he's lined up to the left or lined up to the right, if he's lined up to the right, I'm holding his backside left safety. If he's lined up to the left, I'm holding his front side safety. And all I'm doing is holding him and making sure he takes one step this way because I know Josh going to be his man. That's the thing I know. I know he's going to beat his man. But the other thing you got I know is, and this is where, where I say, like, quarterbacks, you have to know your receiver. This is where, like, throwing after practice and stuff like that come into play. Because I know I can't hold it too long, though, because Josh ain't no speedster. Uh-huh. So when he comes out his break, gotta I got to let it go. Yeah. Because now this guy could catch up to him. You know what I mean? So it's just little shit like that. Timing. That you got to know and get. You got to know your guy. Because if I got a Kayshawn Booty in that situation, I know I don't got to worry about letting it go early. I can let the bitch go late because yeah. ain't nobody going to run with him. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Josh Reed was so good. God, he was so good. He was strong, dude. He was strong. And I still remember the fourth down against Tennessee. You had been knocked out, but he carries that guy five yards for the first down. Damn right. He won um, that game. What was, the, what was a more fun game, the Illinois game or the Georgia Tech game? <laughs> <laughs> Both fun, like, was I mean, like fun, cause like fun, like fun. It was wild and not having a good time. It was just because yeah. it was just, they were both Illinois. great games. Yeah, but yeah, but it was like Georgia Tech games. was nerve wracking though. Georgia, yeah. Georgia Tech was like stressful, especially the first yeah. half. I was pissed off and we weren't playing well and right. like I was. It was so many emotions. Bro, go save the day. It was so many emotions. Bro. Yeah, <laughs> it was. So, that was so great. But, but that, was, that was the when, best. That was feeling. the day I fell in love with the purple jersey. But the, oh, yeah, when it was like I thought I didn't practice good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the purple jerseys were gangster. That was that was. Hey, the day. one again in them. That was Shit the day. Sure. Um, purple jersey was a deal. You think they're ready for SEC play? When you watch them play, you think they're ready? I mean, is it Mississippi? Tonight gave in me Mississippi State a great launch point. Yeah, not a good, no, not this, a good this, starting this, spot. This, this this is a good test. This is a good test. This is a good test, and not to see if we can um, compete for the West or whatever like that. Because I don't think this is the year for that. But I think it's just a good test to see if we continue to improve. And like I said last week, man, when you're not in contention for the national championship and you're not in contention uh, for the SEC West, which I'm not going to just yeah. rule anything out because you still got to line up and play football. Uh, but yeah, I think if everyone was to guess and bet and pick and so on and so forth, we wouldn't pick LSU right now to win the West or to represent the West in the SEC championship. I think that would be a fair statement. But – where we are as you want to improve your football yeah. team. Develop. You want to develop. You want yeah. to improve for next year because you, you still, just because it's an off year, that don't mean you tumble. You know what I mean? So I just want to see improvement. Definitely a win. Definitely want to uh-huh. see a win. 100%. But you want to see improvement from the coaching staff and from the players, and it's going to trickle down from the coaching staff. Uh, shout out to our guy, Thavonka da Silva, who is listening from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, Africa, right? That's a, is that that's Africa. You're out of uh, <laughs> it's nine thirty in the morning there. Oh, perfect timing on Sunday, and he's watching us asking South uh, Asia, South Asia, South Asia. That's where, uh, and that's who was asking if uh, if we needed to improve, if LSU needed to improve uh, going into SEC play. Yes, they do, you my know, friend. They they get a lot. You know what we haven't really discussed is they get a lot of players back this week. It seems like. Ali Gay, who you mentioned, who's probably their most dominant pass rusher now yeah. with Andre Anthony coming along, and B.J. Ojolari had another good night. Hopefully the news is okay on Andre Anthony. Yeah. Um, That'd but, be a big loss. But you get Gay back, Cam Wire, I would expect you would get back. Armani Goodwin is somebody that I would expect that you would probably get in return here. From and back, Chris Hilton missed tonight's game. It'll be interesting to see what his status is, but Trey Palmer missed tonight. Trey Palmer was not dressed out tonight. Well, he lost. I mean, he may have lost. Well, wide receiver two status. I don't know how you get all of them on the field. I don't know how you time. you miss a game or a practice as a wide receiver not and not nervous. just stress yeah. out. Well, I mean, you know what in, I mean. Unless you're injured, you yeah, know, you can't go if you're injured. But it's and even if wrong, I'm, it's the even wrong if I'm, core. I'm trying to go. It's the wrong core. It's the wrong group. You can't miss. And Mickey knows that. Mickey Joseph, he he knows what he has with those guys, and he, you I mean, it's a very competitive group, and you can't miss, man. It's just you know you you miss a game, that's a rep, and somebody else gonna step up, and you got to give those those guys a rep, especially when they show up at game time, bro. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's all about but the game, baby. If you're 
if you're an LSU fan, like, I've, like we've been hypercritical up to this point, but when you see how they looked, is it not like they've all been building toward SEC play? And I've mentioned this before, but Coach O, Mississippi State was the downfall of 2020. That's when it all kind of shit hit the fan. Is this not a circled game? Like, he circles Alabama. He probably circles Ole Miss. And this is in like a but new one in not, the chapter. I hope you're not damn circling Mississippi State. Well, he has to because See, that's what this, I'm talking this, about, dog. This one could have lost him the job a year ago. Yeah, but Lloyd, he doesn't worry about that stuff. He doesn't. Yeah. He doesn't look if he's at it. He doesn't, about that, we got he doesn't the wrong look code. at it. He doesn't look at it like a sports talk radio. I guy. think he does. No way. No, hell no. He can't. You don't think this is an important game? He hell can't. no. They're it's all an important, important game because it's the next yeah, game. Yeah, right, because it's the next one. Right, it's but, important because it ne- has nothing to do with, oh, I have this against yeah, them. Yeah, right. There's no this. vendetta. Fuck, that, no. There's no vendetta. There's no debt I got to pay. Hell no. Hell no. It's not, it ain't high school. Do you know what Coach Yeller talking about? Do you know what talking about? Where he talk, beats the dog no. shit out of Ole Miss every year because yeah, he Yeah, but it doesn't them. matter. You At this point where you are, because where you are with your team, it does. some things doesn't matter. And if yeah. you're thinking about that as the head coach, you got the wrong fucking head you're gonna coach. You're going to get beat. That's the point I'm trying to make. If you're thinking about that, and you're thinking about what they did and how you felt individually about it, and you're running a whole team, we got the wrong person. Hundred percent, hundred percent. But There's do you no not? Way. But do you not think he could see this as a tipping point to go into? Get no, some, I he, think he sees this as a, I'm going into my first win the SEC, SEC play, Western and Division I got to win this against Mississippi. That's right. State. No, that's what I'm saying. This that's could be, but this could prove it. that LSU is not as bad as y'all thought LSU was. Like this we were could, talking to this could show all the you noise around the program. Good. This could show right. you. This listen. This is going to show you if you've progressed. That's it. You ain't winning no SEC championship. You're not winning the national championship. So you want your team and your program, your organization to go in the right direction. This is a good test in that direction. If he doesn't, if they don't do well and he doesn't do well and they don't pass the test, then there's another thing because now you have another test next week. So then we're going to be talking about that one again. But this is the first one. Uh, what was the most impressive thing you saw tonight? I, the coaches, the coaches, the coaches, they did their job. They stepped up. You saw a uh, variety on offense. You saw them trying to do some more things on offense, uh, throwing some more screens, getting the tempo going offensively. Uh, defensively, you saw guys in the right position. You saw him uh, try to heat them up on certain down and distances. So I, tonight it was the coaches for me. I think the coaches did their job tonight. Um, some lasting remarks <laughs> before we get out of here. Uh, anything that you're looking forward to next week? What do we What do we want to like, What do we want to happen this week? I mean, like Liz pointed out, I'm looking forward to the the, the SEC test. Um, I'm 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 confident in what I saw and in, with the improvements in the direction we're going. I, I I have a little bit better idea of what we're trying to do offensively, but at the same time, it's Central Michigan. Yeah, and I'm not gonna say that. Central Michigan was the measuring stick. I think Central Michigan was the coming off of McNeese in, 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 in the previous game against UCLA. I think they were, you know, it was a lot of jargon about them being good and whether it be a test or not and all that stuff. So I'm glad to see how we performed against them. But I think the test, not the test, I think the, the more appropriate measuring stick would be this upcoming week. Uh, another touchdown for Ole Miss is Braylon Sanders Man, they got a on the 60. receiving end from a 45-yard touchdown reception from Matt Corral. They want Corral to win the Heisman so bad. They, they, he might. He the might only, do it. That's yeah, it's going to be Bryce Young. He might but, do it. Oh, and UCLA's on the ropes against Fresno yeah, State right now. They're down 20-10. Oh, really? That's uh, not good. You want 60. them to win. Yeah, you want them to win the whole conference. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, 60 for uh, Ole Miss, 61 coming here with the PAT. 60 points. Uh, good stuff from uh, 60, and it's uh, thir- uh, 7.56 left in the third. Uh, for Daddy. Roe, Roe was showing off tonight on the grill over here at the UDL. Uh, fed everybody. It was fantastic. The chicken, the sausage, the steak. The asparagus, all of it was fantastic. The analysis, uh, the analysis Liz ain't even was great. None, dog. Uh, we will be back with My you dog. tomorrow. BJ Ojolari will be here. We'll talk to Kayshawn yes, Butte, who will be here as well. Uh, we're trying to track down Jack Besh. 
as uh, he had a fantastic night, caught his first touchdown. Good coming out party for that boy. Was, Beautiful night for him. Five catches for a touchdown. Yes, sir. Was that the difference having Deion Smith out there just to have another? He looked like another number one. He, you just know, to stretch he, the field as a sign from Keyshawn Butte having to do it every time. He looked like the kid. He looked like that kid that played for Bama last year. He looks smooth. Yeah, he looks smooth and fast. He and snatched long. that some bitch. He, he played it's well. He's bigger, man. stronger, he faster well. than you. Yeah, he played yeah. well. It be it's gonna be interesting, dude, going forward with these receivers, dude. He got so Brian many. Thomas played well tonight. Yeah. Got you a know, lot of reps, too. Yeah. yeah. And he needs reps though, because yeah. honestly, he's our biggest target. Biggest physical target. He needs to be out there. He should there be a red zone on cat a consistent every down. Every basis, man. Like it's so many of them, though. My goodness. They and do get that O-line figured out, man. There's weapons everywhere. Well, that's oh, how you play it. Just snap it and get rid of it. Yeah. That's exactly snap and release. Dude, them throwing that's the ball exactly deep right. was snap such a difference release. maker. Snap and release. Exactly uh, well, you know what it does is just let them damn DBs know, like, we're not going to be sitting you in front of You can't be sitting in cover zero. Let them know first play. First snap of the game. We're changing we're, the way we're, we're playing. playing. Yeah. Exactly. Don't throw him into double covers, though. Oh, no, no. Don't almost, got him, <laughs> almost got him killed on the first yeah, play, gracious. man. Don't do that. And he um, went to get it, too. He, he didn't well, give I mean, a shit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah if, he's a dog. If, if it's in the air, it's his. It's mine. Uh, all right, for Lizzie, for Noah, for Roe, we'll be back with you tomorrow talking to Kayshawn and BJ uh after big days. Uh, Fresno up 2010 right now. Oh, no. Uh, more college football. Y'all enjoy the evening. Ooh, 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 ooh